Hello, today I am doing a quick demonstration video on my new Max for Live device uh, lab bench. So this comes in two, uh, two halves, uh, two different devices that work in tandem. Uh, this first one, Lab S, is the uh, send node. Um, so this kind of acts as a signal generator. Uh, you can see you can enter different uh, uh, waveforms. Um, white noise, pink noise, uh, and you don't actually need the second, uh, this receive node, um, to, to use it. Uh, you could, uh, you could just use it as a signal generator with some other, um, analysis software and run it through devices or just go by ear, sort of run a sine wave in and, and hear the distortion or something. Uh, there's a couple more advanced features like this, uh, this trigger mode. Um, so you can trigger a single impulse. Uh, I included a, another scope here that's a slower rate because you're not going to be able to see it on the auto scope uh, in the other device, but you can see I'm sending just a single impulse when I click. Um, I can also set up so that this clicks at a set interval, um, this auto trigger. Uh, so right now it's triggering every uh, one second. Uh, I'll turn that off for now. The other thing you can do is uh, set it to um, burst mode. So this uses sort of the other half of this uh, pulse device. Um, so here, see there's uh, three bursts that, it, that it's going to do. We're setting the width of the pulse here. It's not just one sample. Uh, the, the, um, to keep it simple, the trigger, the standard trigger is just a uh, a single regular impulse, so it's it's uh, one sample that has an amplitude of one. Just that's great for some measurements uh, if you want to to uh, see the response of a system. But other times you might want a a burst. So um, there you can see the three pulses down below. Um, yeah, we can make them really quick or a lot longer. Um, you can see they're kind of running against each other. Um, you can't have the pulse width exceed like the burst period. So this is the time in between the pulses, uh, sort of from the first edge to the, to the edge of the next pulse. So, uh, yeah, you can see it, it has to be, um, I said it, so it has to have at least one millisecond in between just for round numbers, but, um, of course, you could. Uh, that, that I could have chose something else. Uh, I don't see why you might need anything uh, smaller than that. Uh, just use the impulse mode. But um, the burst mode, you can also. So maybe I'll go back down to three, and um, you can also use the auto trigger. So it's just going to send a burst of three at the moment every one point one three seconds. Um, so this stuff is is great. It's not as um, useful, I think, as just the sine wave. Um, I usually just use a sine and a pulse for almost everything. Sometimes noise and, and saw come in handy, but um, sine and pulse are, 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 I think, really the way to go. Also on the pulse and the triangle, we do have a pulse width um, option, so you can if it's at 50%, it's zero, but you could skew it in either direction. Um, the, tr the triangle is actually a little bit sharper of a, of a saw than the saw is. Um, these are all the uh, band limited uh, uh, waves. So they're, I guess it's arguable whether they're a perfect test signal or not, but uh, um, that's just to prevent aliasing from the test signal itself. Um, you can also, if you you can see uh, from the frequency dial, you're not getting uh, like it's hard to dial a very specific frequency. So say I I want uh, I, I'm at seven hundred twenty hertz and I want seven fifteen. I can just type it in the box. Um, and there's also I think the presets for what I I call the the um, three most useful test frequencies, um, and that changes the knob here if you go 
change it back, it latches back to manual. Um, yeah, so that's that's the uh, the send node, and I think it's important to understand what that's doing first. But it's also working in tandem with this receive node. Um, so right now we're just on the oscilloscope, but there's a bunch of uh, useful tests, uh, uh, test devices here. Um, so the oscilloscope, I think that's pretty straightforward. Uh, we have a XY scope. Um, so in this case, the uh, X input is the, uh, um, the input. So the X axis is the input and the Y axis is the output. Um, so it, it kind of works just like a function. You can see there's just a vertical line right now. Uh, that's because um, that's because we actually need to do a little bit of routing. So this is just audio track one, whatever the title of your track is, you'd want to use that. And then you'd want to go to the lab S device. So what that, that does is it forwards the test frequency um, to the uh, X axis of this scope. Um, so it's a straight line right now that just kind of means the input is the same as the output. So uh, this, um, I'll, I, this is where you start to see how the uh, device train works here. So, oops, um, overwrote the actual device. And we still see a straight line. So this is a wave table, or sorry, a wave shaper device, just a spline based wave shaper. Um, and uh, this is where you start to see what this, uh, what this device really does. Um, so if it's perfectly uh, time dependent or, or time independent, you'll, you'll get the exact uh, function. Um, I might have had some filtering in this, which can kind of uh, mess up the response. Um, actually, I'm just going to switch over for a second and make sure. Um, Let's use saturator first here. I have this bypassed. Um, yeah, so this is more what you'd expect if there's no uh, filtering. You should get sort of the, the response um, of the curve. And of course here, uh, as you use different curves, you'll get the different responses. Um, the digital clipping, it's very obvious. It's just lopping off the top. Uh, so we're, we're adding the gain. That's why the linear section is also, the, the slope is getting steeper. Um, but uh, we are just hard clipping in that mode. Um, so the XY scope, it does have a, um, sort of a manual and automatic phase compensation you can use. Um, the automatic should work, but if you're finding that it's not catching the delay properly, you could, uh, of course, switch to the manual phase mode. Um, one thing you will find, uh, actually, let's try, try this out. This hysteresis plugin is uh, meant to emulate transformer saturation. Um, so it should show the actual window um, as we uh, as we drive it. I haven't tried this out beforehand, although I have with other devices. Um, let's just flatten the EQ. 
Um, yeah, I hear in the in the manual timing mode, it's working um, a little more predictably. Um, so he, as the the window control should actually do quite a bit, you should see the window width uh, uh, rising with that parameter, um, which you do see. So the, the way hysteresis works is there's two separate kind of curves, two paths, and it'll take a different uh, path as it's rising versus falling. Um, there's a more uh, simplistic version of this with the, the first uh, hysteresis device. Um, this uses a simpler algorithm. Um, let's see if we can, with no window, see if we can line it up. Um, okay, that's kind of about right. Hmm. It looks cool. It's not really showing it. <laughs> Uh, I probably should have probably should have checked this out before starting to record, um, but you you can in theory see see the full window this full history this window using the X Y scope. Uh, it definitely works for static wave shapers, but uh, yeah, the the just getting the phase uh, lined up is uh, pretty tricky. So I did my best with the uh, automatic mode, but it's uh, it's not perfect. Um, I would actually say for all of these devices, um, like they're not, I don't guarantee the accuracy of the measurements, but it should give you an idea of what the processing is doing. Um, so I think just a standard frequency, uh, spectrum analyzer is a, is a very powerful tool. Um, I, if I'm looking at, if I'm analyzing a device, uh, whether it's one I'm making or if I'm looking at uh, another pre plugin or, or hardware or something, you can drop it in the in the uh, chain here um, and uh, try and get a sense of what it's doing. Uh, for instance, I was, hopefully, um, my iLock is registering right now. <laughs> um, but uh, for instance, these uh, Kush uh, Omega um, units I was I was analyzing and trying to see what they were doing um, I would always recommend starting with a sign and like a standard frequency I find 100 is a good place to start just because it you see uh, a lot more in the range of the spectrum analyzer but sometimes you'll need to to sweep that around so without the device or very clearly just getting a single response at 100 uh, Hertz and as we uh, drive it, we're seeing, um, looks like 300, um, 500. Yeah, so we're not getting the even order harmonics, just odd order harmonics. Um, so if you're looking at a distortion device, um, yeah, I think a combination of the spectrum analyzer, oscilloscope, um, you can see that shaping and the X Y scope usually give you a give a give you a pretty good result. We can gain this up just to see the difference. Yeah, so it's definitely applying, and it looks like it's a static curve on this one. There might, um, I actually have a pretty good idea of what this processor is, and I covered it in another video, but it's it's a. Uh, a very high gain uh, um, uh, sigmoid wave shaper, uh, but it's mixed pretty low. It's only mixed to about 3%. And uh, this intensity knob is actually more of a, a cross mixer than it is a uh, drive. Um, there might also be some input and output filtering, uh, but that that's sort of the basis of this. Uh, this is of course supposed to model a Neve uh, 1073 console, I believe. Um, 
yeah, so, so those are the tools I generally use if I'm looking at distortion devices, especially static. Um, you can you can use this as well, this uh, spectrogram. I should have left this in. <laughs> um, but uh, of course, without the device, you'll just see the one frequency um, hotspot and with it, especially while, while it's distorting, you start to see the harmonics. Um, the uh, spectrogram, spectrogram, sorry, uh, this is also really good for seeing aliasing. Um, so sometimes, I, I guess I didn't actually include this, but you could do a sign sweep uh, and then see the, the pattern of uh, reflections from the aliasing. Um, we could just use uh, Redux to see some aliasing. So in this case, or or in the standard case, you get aliasing if, uh, especially with uh, distortion plugins, uh, because you're creating more high frequency harmonics. Uh, that's like very common. So uh, most most uh, distortion plugins, uh, they have two times or four times or even eight times over sampling um, so that the highest frequency that's being generated doesn't um, doesn't hit Nyquist, Nyquist being half of the sample rate. Um, so oversampling basically takes care of it. You oversample, then you filter back down to um, 20 kilohertz before downsampling again. Um, in this case, we actually, we could get Nyquist just by uh, lowering the sample rate rather than, um, rather than uh, um, raising the harmonic input. Um, so you could, let's maybe try a saw. A saw has, uh, is quite a um, high harmonic signal. So as we lower the sample rate, we see Actually, this would have been a better way to do it. So if I set the the sample rate maybe around one or two k, sure that's fine. And then I I start off low. We're kind of getting our 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 sign signal here, but as we get closer and we approach uh, Nyquist and exceed Nyquist, we're seeing it sort of split off. So you get this uh, reflection pattern. Um, uh what else uh, aliases oh you can also see this on the spectrum analyzer um yeah there we go so the ones that are going back down are uh alias frequencies so they're in harmonic they're not harmonically related to the original signal normally the harmonics should be a, a integer multiple of the fundamental frequency um, so that relationship falls apart when you have uh, aliasing. Um, yeah, other things that would cause aliasing is a, um, a wavetable synthesizer. If you have like a higher harmonic waveform and you're not interpolating correctly, um, that could uh, that could do it. Um, that's why the uh, the saw wave here is uh, band limited, um, is to prevent aliasing. Um, you also would get it in uh, uh, even like a nonlinear filter, which has uh, nonlinear functions like 10H built in. Um, yeah, so it can, it can be introduced in quite a few places. It's nice to be able to see it directly. Um, this whole suite kind of does the plugin doctor thing, but um, built into live. Um, so normally if I'm if I'm working on a Max for Live device, this is where I would use something like this. Um, I can't load it into Plugin Doctor, um, but you can uh, you can use all these tools directly. 
So the next one here is frequency response. So this is uh, this is linear frequency response only. Uh, so it's good to see filters and EQ curves. Uh, so we can look at some of the Ableton ones. Um, it's not too exciting to see this uh, at on a Ableton plugin because you can you can sort of see this is matching. Um, but especially, for instance, uh, EQ8, I mean, they, they show you already what it's doing with the, the graphic curve here, but where this is more useful is if you're looking at um, like an analog modeled uh, EQ. So, so I've done a couple of these, uh, Lunchbox EQ, um, which, um, deleted it again. Um, you can hear the clicking now. That's because this this uses a bunch of impulses. I have the gain way down just in case this happens. But um, if, if you want to unmute it and hear the uh, test signals, you can. That goes the same for the uh, signal generators and everything. They're not normally very pleasant, so you probably don't want that, but uh, it is an option <laughs> if you do. Um, yeah, so the this one, like, y you don't know what the curves are um, by before you turn the knobs. Like, you don't really know what it's doing. So um, I think that can be a, a strength of a plugin like this. Is It kind of forces you to use your ears, but... Uh, if you're like me and you want to, uh, you want to, you know, s sort of get a bit a better picture of uh, um, what the process is doing, maybe you're reverse engineering it, or um, which, which is what I did here. This is a this is a, the Kush um, Electra EQ that I reverse engineered. Um, yeah, this this is kind of a good tool for that. Uh, what's another one? We have, uh, um, the Paltech that I released. Um, this is not my own processing. It's a uh, wave digital filter implementation by uh, some of the Karma students. Um, and it was just for me to sort of test uh, their, um, their um, Max wave digital filter library. Um, or not Max, it's so it's uh, Faust actually, but it, you can host Faust and Max. So for this, like a Paltech, you really have no idea what it's doing. It's 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 a little bit nebulous. What do all these knobs do? There's like a boost and an attenuation. Uh, especially here, like these are both relating to this frequency, but like they're not actually at the same center frequency, so. That's kind of strange, right? Um, um, yeah, it, you can get a better picture of, of what these uh, analog EQ models are doing uh, with this with this mode, or even um, yeah, even just a filter if you're looking at like auto filter or something. Um, uh, now those modes, some of them are non-linear, so they don't work perfectly in this, but uh, you do get a. a somewhat of an idea, as long as you're not driving the filter too hard. Uh, this last mode is dynamic range. So this shows you, uh, this shows you the compression. So maybe we'll just load up the, um, the regular compressor um, first. Um, so this, this, uh, I think it's interesting how it works. So I'm going to give it a little bit of background. Um, it actually uses uh, amplitude modulation. So there's a, a 600, or sorry, a six kilohertz uh, uh, carrier wave. And then we're just modulating the amplitude of that. We have like a ramp up and then it goes back to zero. It holds for a little bit, then does a ramp up. You can sort of see this on, on this meter or even on, on the uh, level meter is what it's doing. Um, maybe if we have the volume down, we could even unmute it. And... 
yeah so it's an annoying sound i regularly uh recommend you just keep this muted but the reason why there's that carrier wave instead of just the ramp is a lot of uh compressors have input filters or or at least a dc uh um a dc offset remover um so that that's essentially a high pass filter and it, if it's just the ramp uh, itself, then that that uh, tends to get blocked by those filters. So you need an AC wave that you're modulating for it to actually pass through. Um, and 6K, I went for a pretty high frequency carrier wave because it's easier to filter out later to make it uh, DC on this end um, with an envelope follower. Um, so uh, yeah, in this case, we're sending in a linear ramp. Without the compressor, you see this is just gonna be straight. That means there's no gain attenuation. And the axis is here, it's uh, this end would be um, like quiet, this end would be loud. And this is the input axis, output axis like before, quiet, loud. Um, so you can see uh, with the compressor, it's uh, taking the loud signals that would have been up here and then pushing them down. Um, so with a hard knee, you get a very hard curve here. And of course, a softer knee um, rounds it off a lot more. This is a lot more what an analog compressor would be doing. Um, if you want to get a really good picture of what this is doing, I would recommend uh, faster attack and release settings to make this more like instantaneous. Um, and of course, if you change, um, I'm going to go back to a hard knee, but yeah, we can, we can, uh, see as we adjust the ratio, it's going to get steeper or, or sorry, less steep as we go down. Or if we go to infinity, it should just be flat. Um, yeah, so that's sort of what it does. We could look at a couple. But well, people like glue a lot. This is a SSL 4000 compressor. Uh, I think there is, oh, yeah, there's some clipping. So this is also has some nonlinearities, but um, just uh, take it with a grain of salt though, that this won't be a perfect response curve. And, um, but you get a sense of what it's doing. Um, I think like like uh wave shaping um and eq i kind of think you can get almost any sound with your stock compressor with this original one if you get the settings right like a flexible compressor gets you the sound of a ssl and a la2a and everything they most of the time sometimes there's a uh, maybe a multi-stage uh release curve or something uh, that you can't do with a normal compressor, but uh, the majority of the time, you you can uh, you can basically get there with with a flexible compressor if you know what you're doing. So I I think this kind of tool uh, lets you um, kind of get a little more analytical and understand your tools better. Um, and I would recommend like using this outside of the context of producing or mixing. Like spend the time to learn what your favorite compressor is actually doing and then you can copy it with uh with a, a more universal compressor uh is if you need to later on um let's actually look at uh an la2a um i like this bedroom producer blog one which is a free um this uh yeah dirty la um, there's a good, uh, there's a couple good free LA to A compressors. Um, I like the sound of this one. It's actually one of the simpler uh, responses. Um, yeah, and it's just a soft knee compressor with kind of a long attack. Um, obviously, if we add the distortion, um, we're, we're kind of uh, blowing up the curve a little bit. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, 
it's quite simple uh, all in all um, I also made a optical uh, compressor um, called opto um, yeah. take a look at that maybe not I might have a couple different versions of this but I yeah, the interface is not working right now. Uh, I guess it's still compressing, but it's, uh, I, I'll have to figure out what what's going on with the interface. Uh, sometimes I keep editing devices after I upload them and I have to go back to the original uh, device downloaded and, and uh, troubleshoot or, or sort of refresh my, my status for that. Um, anyways, so yeah, this is, this is a uh, uh, lab bench and uh, free pay what you want device. Uh, so if you want to get analytical, um, it's a good uh, tool set for doing that. Uh, oh, one more thing I forgot to mention, these uh, buttons, it just switches between the left, right, and uh, summed average of the channels. Uh, so for uh, scope, X, Y, not for the spectrum, this is just stereo. If you have, actually, if you have a stereo signal, you'll see that there's two lines. Spectrogram is mono. So for any of these mon um, mono processors like this, you get to choose what in input signal you're using. Um, the output to uh, lab S to the, to the test uh, signals is mono. Um, so it shouldn't matter unless your processor is doing something different on the different channels. Um, we could actually, uh, we could see the, uh, the differences maybe. Um, so I don't know, I could, um, maybe I'll use pedal on one channel, group it. I'll make this the left and um, hmm. maybe just saturate on the right. So these are doing, they should have different curves. Maybe we'll change this one to the digital curve. So if we look at the the scope oh, we need to hmm. some phase oh yeah yeah some phase discrepancy um, but you can see the different signals were summed. So in this case, the sum isn't really giving you an accurate picture of what's going on, but you need to look at the left and right separately. Or if we look at the spectrum analyzer, make sure we're putting in a sine wave, um, we can see that the um, processing is doing different things. Uh, the blue line being the right channel. So, yeah, that's kind of a useful tool. You you can also see different EQ curves on the left and right um, on the linear mode. So, auto filter. And a it doesn't really matter for this, uh, but we'll do something different. And just so you can see the the curves, you could even use a device like a utility device that makes it mid side and see the mid and side channels this way. Um, I don't have it built in, but yeah, there's uh, quite a lot of possibilities. Um, 
So hopefully this gives you a uh, uh, a helpful rundown of, of what's possible with this and some different uh, testing strategies. And uh, yeah, it's a it's a free device. So if you if you're interested in this kind of thing and uh, looking at what some different plugins are are doing, I'd encourage you to check it out and play around with it. Thanks. Have a good day, everybody.